Barry, if I were kind of candid with you and as well as myself, uh, when I first started looking at fine tuning many decades ago, I, I guess I was kind of hoping for some teleological explanation. We all like to have simple answers to what it's all about. Um, and, and when I get into those kinds of moods, I try to turn myself around by looking at the opposite, not, look, not looking for things that confirm my hopes, but things that would uh, defeat my, uh, my hopes. So if, if we were to look at fine-tuning um, and ask what the fallacies or what the potential pitfalls that we don't see in these kinds of discussions, uh, how do we go about that? Well, I think that the idea that the universe was fine-tuned for there being life or for complexity or for there being intelligent life has a couple of presuppositions because it creates a problem only when one looks at that and thinks there must be an explanation and then thinks the only kind of explanation that looks plausible is that it's designed to be like that. Um, but I'm not sure that there must be an explanation. There may be some things that just don't have explanations. And we might ask ourselves, why do we think that there must be an explanation for the fact that, let's say, the cosmological constant has a very small value? Well, we might think it has an explanation because there are theories in physics that say that it ought to have a very big value. Then we really do have a problem or a crisis. But for other constants, it's not clear like that. For example, what's called the fine structure constant, which has to do with a lot with uh, why there's the kind of chemistry that there is uh, that we're familiar with. Um, it has a certain value and it might strike people, why does it have that value as opposed to any other value? And that's a question. But there may just not be any further explanation. You might have just come to an end. A reason, which I think is really a fallacy, to think it must have another explanation, is to think that, well, its value is just one value out of a gamut of many possible values. And so it's so unlikely that it has that value. And I think that that's a mistake, because I think there's no likelihood or probability of it having any value. The notion of probability has to do with things that we find in the world as we find the world of experience. And the world we experience is one in which the fine, uh, to the, the fine structure constant has a particular value. And so our notion of probability already presupposes a world with certain um, patterns of events in it and certain frequencies of events. And that's where our conception of how likely various things are. And so it doesn't even apply in that case. Um, does, does that mean when we're doing a probability, you need a numerator and a denominator? So what you're saying is the denominator in this case is we don't, we don't know what that is, and therefore probabilities are not, not a sensible way to think about it? I do think that that's true, but that wasn't exactly what I was saying in this particular case. In this particular case, I was saying that what makes probabilities, the probabilities that hold, has to do with the patterns of events in the world. Right. Okay? And the patterns of events in the world are in a world with the fine structure constant having a particular value. And so to go outside the oh, world, oh. it doesn't really make any sense. However, there is an issue that comes up, which is another fallacy, I think, that I've seen some of my colleagues, if I can say so, some of my physics colleagues make <laughs> in this discussion. And that's this. They look at all the ways the world could be, all the possible universes that could be. Okay. And our universe is just one. Yeah. It's one with life in it, one with intelligent life in it, one with beautiful Crete in it, and so on. And they say, look, out of all of these possible universes, very few of them have life in it. I think that's just a mistake. And there are two problems here. One is there are infinitely many possible universes and infinitely many with life in it. So infinity over infinity doesn't make any sense. Okay? Uh, that's one problem. Uh, okay, uh, and this is the, the, the famous problem of, of, uh, of uh, classifying infinities and what kind of infinity do we have because if, if you take any subset of the universes, however big or however small you want, the percentage of that would have life if, if, if all the constants would be randomized from, I don't know what the, <laughs> the limits are, but within whatever limits, an uh, extremely small percentage of that sample size would be uh, would have life in it. If by sample you meant take a subset at random of the universe, um, then you're right. Yeah. But there you were using a probabilistic notion. And how would one take at random a subset of the mm -hmm. universe? If you meant for any infinite subset of the universe, 
that's subset of all of the sets, fewer of them would have life than the universe, the set of universes yeah. as a whole. Or that in some sense there are more uni possible universes with not life than with life. That is the very mistake I was saying my physics colleagues were making. Both sets are infinite. Now, exact, you're right that there are orders of infinity, um, and the number of possible worlds there are, that is, say, not by, there are, I mean, that e concretely exist. That's not the view of possible worlds here. They're just possibilities. Right, right. But we can still count these possibilities. Right. There are, it's a question of how many there are, but however many there are, there are just as many with life as without life. It might take a little work for me to persuade you of that, but that's true. Well, on, but only if you assume both are infinite. Yes. Right. Because if you assume that, that um, both are not infinite, however big, then that's not true. That's right. You're correct about that. Uh, 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 and uh, so in the multiverse theory, which is one of the, well, it, it's probably the leading scientific theory about why there is fine-tuning right now, um, there is a question whether the multiverse is infinite or whether it's had a start at one point and the number is so large we wouldn't even know how to understand it, but it's still never infinite. That's right. But I wouldn't run together two notions of possible universe or two notions of universe. One is the philosopher's notion that comes from Leibniz of possibilities. Right, okay. There, there are clearly infinitely many possibilities. Right, 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 right. Okay. Sure, sure. The other is a notion that's grown up in some scientific theories um, the inflationary uh, cosmology is one right. example of that, it's so-called internal inflation, where um, it, might, it does seem to be a consequence of eternal inflation that there are lots and lots of universes. These are not just ways the actual universe could, could be, be really. they're actually ways, parts of the actual universe, right. just spatially separated from each other. Right, right. Um, and so, and so what, what, what do we conclude from that? Well, I conclude from the fact that if we're just talking about possibilities, that it's a fallacy to argue from there are many more possibilities in which there's not life than which there are life, to therefore it's much more likely for there to be a universe without life than a universe with life, to therefore our universe cries out for explanation. That's the fallacy that we began talking about. Um, with respect to the multiverse, well, if there exists if inflationary cosmology is true, and I have my doubts about that, um, then, um, uh, and internal inflation is true, then there are many actual universes, actually existing universes, not mere possibilities, and they may differ from each other in various ways. And that might provide a kind of explanation for why it is that, for example, the cosmological constant has the value it does. And in fact, um, as is well known, the very important and famous Nobel Prize winning physicist Steven Weinberg actually predicted uh, from the idea that there are, is a multiverse that the value of the cosmological constant would be within a certain range. Because in the multiverse, the cosmological constant could have many possible values and we would live in a universe only with its being having a value of which is very small and so the only kind of universe we could find ourselves in is one in which it's very small. That doesn't really explain why the, universe, the, um, uh, the cosmological constant has a small value, but it explains why we see a small value. This kind of explanation is called an anthropic explanation. It's an explanation for why we see a small value. The explanation for why the value is small is just that within the multiverse all values um, appear and we can only exist in a universe with a small value.